Welcome to Add a Little Dazzle. In today's video, I will be teaching you how to create this matchbox using the Mocha Morning Designer Series Specialty Paper along with the black satin ribbon. These little matchboxes are perfect as party favors and as small gifts that you can fill with a lot of different items in it and accompanied with the beautiful stamp set blessings from heaven and some pearls and a beautiful little flower we can bring it all together beautifully so let's get started to begin creating this project we will begin by taking an extended um, cutting plate and putting it on this surface then I will take the shim and I will place it on top then what I will need to do is I will need to take the big Max matchbox um, die and place it on top. Now I do want to make you aware that this matchbox die is retiring and will no longer be available through Stamping Up as of June 1st. So if you are interested in this matchbox die, you need to get it right away before it is sold out. Okay, so as you can see here, this matchbox die comes with the box section here, the cover right here, and three little labels. And so what we are going to do is I am going to take my five and a half by six and a half inch piece of basic black cardstock and I am going to place it right here over the box section of the die. Then I am going to take my three and a quarter inch by six and three quarter inch piece of Mocha Morning Designer Series specialty paper and I am going to place it right there on top. Once I have done that, I am going to take my premium crease pad. I'm going to place it this on top and I'm going to run this entire piece through my Big Shot. So once I have done that, I will end up with this piece which is for the box and I will end up with this piece which is for the wrap around of the matchbox. And so what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all the crease lines with my bone folder and I've already done that and there are some little edges here you're going to bring in. Now to assemble this box I attach a piece of sticky strip here and here on the long flaps. I like to do that to give it some extra support. You don't need it but I like it. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and peel the red film right there and then what I always like to do just for the extra support, I put a little bit of snail right here on the edges so that when I bring in my sides, it sticks nicely into place and I don't have to worry about it holding on. As you can see here, I brought it the other side and then I've just attached it right there and I've done the same thing for the other side. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the sides with the sticky strip in and I'm going to fold them over. It's important that you go over those crease lines with your bone folder just to make sure that you get it right. And so then I've gone over the other one right here. Now if I want to make sure I have a good crease just place it like that on its side and go over it with the bone folder and you can see that it is there. Now you have these small little tabs here and all you need to do is just bring it in and the little flaps will just fall into place there. But I like a nice finished look to it and so it has these little tabs right here and I really don't like the way that looks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 1 and 7 8 inch by 2 and a half inch piece of Mocha Morning Designer Series specialty paper and I'm going to run snail along the back of it and then I'm going to center it and attach it inside my box so it covers those little tabs and it just gives me a better finished look and so now I'm going to put this to the side for right now and I have my 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 wrap right here that I ran through the Big Shot also and I'm going to go over those creases. And here we go, here's my other crease. Now you don't want to go over them too hard especially with this paper as it is 
very delicate. Let me see, I'm not being able to see the score marks here. And so if you need to add the extra pressure on it, then make sure that you do. And that would be by adding, instead of the thinner shim, maybe adding the cardstock. And let me see, I can't see it. Oh, here we go. Here it is. Okay. And so there it is. And so that way, if that shim on the bottom, like I said, doesn't make the crease lines um, where it's visible enough, then you can replace that shim with a piece of cardstock and that will help. You just need that extra pressure. And so here it is, the wrap for my box. Now I'm going to open it. Now, the one thing that you need to keep in mind is that you need to place the sticky strip on this small flap because when you wrap it around and bring it, you don't want it to overhang on this side because it is wider. And I originally did it here and when I did that, I ended up with it overhanging which then made this little matchbox not be able to slide out. So again, you want to apply your sticky strip right there. And there you go. And if what I do is if they're going to overlap because it's not wide enough but I want that extra protection, then what I do is I go ahead and peel the first layer off. And then I take another piece of sticky strip, put it on top, right there, and then it's ready to attach. But before I do that, for this specific project, I want to create a little half inch circle right here. Again, this is my bigger tab and this is my smallest one so you want the bigger one on top so you know you've done it right and I'm going to place it right here in this section that you see right there and I'm going to place it the one inch circle punch halfway in and I'm just going to punch it out right there and so you're going to see a little slot and it'll make sense to you once we assemble the box and so then I'm going to peel the other piece of red film and then I'm going to bring it around close the flap like that that's how I do it and then you see that yeah okay and then just attach it right there not bending anything because it won't be even but just so I get a good finish there and as you can see then here is my box and it'll slide right in. Now, because of the way that the tag works on the, this box and everything, I want my ribbon to be inside here so I can actually pull out the box. And so I took a 24 inch piece of black satin ribbon and just so you know, this satin ribbon is also retiring. And so if you want some black satin ribbon, you need to get it right away. And so then I've placed it like that, I wrapped it around my matchbox, then I'm going to place it, slide my matchbox back in. Okay, and the ribbon is not going to be attached to anything. I'm just going to position it the way I want it. And then I'm going to make sure that both ends meet. And then I'm going to tie it in a bow right here. So here's my bow, and I always like to have excess ribbon versus less because everybody likes to um, adjust the ends to different lengths, and so this gives you the ability to do that. And, and so then I would just keep adjusting it to where I want it, and then when I'm going to slide it out, I could just, well, you could just push it and it'll slide out easily because if I wrap it around here on the top then what's going to happen is that they're going to have to undo the whole thing to get to whatever you put inside and like this they would just have to just slide it to the side and pull it out and there's no need to damage the bow, undo the bow actually and you know sometimes when you give these gifts to people they don't know how to make the bow 
and they don't even want to open it because they're scared of damaging the bow so this will eliminate that and so then here we go and you're just going to fix it and then we are going to start by creating the tag okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to create this nothing but heaven itself is better than a friend tag and I created that tag using the blessings from heaven stamp set I absolutely love this stamp set it has a lot of different um, sayings on it and I think it's a perfect stamp set to have handy now in order to create this piece I'm going to take a three inch square piece of whisper white cardstock and I'm going to take my embossing buddy and doing this will enable when I heat emboss this that none of that um, embossing powder will stick and it'll be all messy all around so I'm just going to pat it and go over it to release that powder that this has in it. Now once I've done that I'm going to take my basic black craft ink along with that stamp set and I'm just going to stamp it right here in the center. Now that I've done that I'm going to take this is called the Powder Pals and just so you know this is also going to be retiring and I really like this because you're able to put your embossing powder in there and then when you need to empty it it has a little nozzle that you remove right here and you can easily pour it back into your container and so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up the powder and put it on my cardstock. Now this Powder Pals comes with two trays uh, this little one and a bigger one and it also comes with a little brush for cleaning it off the powder. This is not it, but I'm going to show you it with this. And I use it if I have extra embossing powder that I don't want to show up because it'll stick. Once I heat set it, then I will just go in and remove it. And then I will take my heat tool and emboss this piece. And when I do, it will end up looking like this and it has a beautiful shiny finish to it. And so then the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to create, um, I'm going to make the frame for this. You need to stamp the image first and then place it on top so that you are sure that it's exactly where you want it to be. And so I'm going to use the smallest framelits for this piece and I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to take my closed multi-purpose platform, put it right there, put a cutting pad on top, place my cardstock right there, then take my frame and place it exactly where I want it. Place the other cutting pad on top and then I will run this through my Big Shot. Once I've run it through my Big Shot, I will end up with a piece like this and as you can see, it is um, the wording fits perfectly in there. Now, I created a frame for this piece, and the framelits come in a bigger size, but it was much wider than what I wanted. So I took two three inch square pieces of basic black cardstock and I ran through the machine two more. Um, cut out two more pieces using the same die but I want to create a frame for this so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take one of the pieces and I'm going to cut it down the center horizontally and then I'm going to take my other piece I'm going to snip off these little edges right here because I don't need that because if I leave that it'll actually show up it'll actually show up when I'm assembling it and so then what I'm going to do is cut this one vertically. And so I'm going to take my tag, I'm going to turn it around, and I'm just going to run snail adhesive along the back. And I'm going to take my first vertical piece, and I'm going to line it to create a little frame. I don't want a big one, so that's why I'm using the same one and doing this technique. And then I'm going to line it over here again. And then I'm going to take my big one. If I don't have enough snail, then now it's time to go over on the back again. Take this piece, attach it right there. Then take the bottom piece 
and attach it right there and I have this now perfectly framed. Now I'm going to add three little pearls at the bottom like I did here and then I'm going to create this little rolled flower right there. So I'm going to take this three inch square piece of cherry cobbler cardstock and I am going to punch out a one and a quarter inch piece, a circle, and place it right there. Then I'm going to take my half inch circle punch and I'm going to punch out that little half inch. And so now in order to create this circle, we'll put the little one to the side for right now. I'm just going to start right there and I'm going to start cutting in a spiral. And I'm going to do this until I have reached the end or the center of my circle. Um, you could make it, I would probably make it a little bit more wider versus thinner because that'll help in the creation of the sides of the flower. I've tried it both ways and I like it better that way. And so here I've done this and now I'm at the end. And so now what I'm going to do is I could take a stylus or I could take the end of a paintbrush and I'm going to wrap it around here and I'm just going to wrap the, the, the end of the flower until it is secure right there. And if you want, what you can do just to get it going is add a little bit of snail on that end so that when you make that first wrap, let me see, it'll hold on. There we go. Oh, no, it didn't hold on. Let me try again. There we go. That should hold on. And then you're just going to start twirling it. And you're going to twirl, wrap the paper around the 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 end of the paintbrush or the stylus and just wrap it and continue wrapping like this see what's let me show you what's happening it's all coming in there together you see that and so I'm going to continue doing that until I've wrapped the entire piece around the end of this okay in order I have my little flower right here and I'm holding it in between my fingers I've placed a little glue dot at the end, but I want to hold it all in place so it doesn't come apart. So I took this little half inch circle and I'm just applying some snail adhesive to it. And I'm now taking my circle, my rosette, or my rolled flower and attaching it there. And that'll help it to not, less of a chance of coming apart. And so then I've rolled, I've cupped that half inch piece around the back of it. Then I'm going to take another glue dot, attach it right there, maybe a couple if you need to. And then you are going to place it right here. And then you are going to take one of the pearls from our Stamping Up Pearls, I took the bigger one right here and I'm just gonna drop it in. You may have to reposition it with your with your scissors or your or your something pointy and then you're just gonna reposition it there and it'll hold in place. Okay, mine isn't wanting to cooperate right now, but there we go. Okay, so now it is holding in place perfectly. Now, the thing that I love about this is see it slides out. And not only and some of the ideas that I had of items that you can put in here, this is will hold or add a little dazzle lip moisturizers. You can actually slide it to the side and you can easily fit. Let me show you three of these. And you can either create them with My Digital Studio and add a little dazzle transfer sheets, 
or you can even color cover them with metal and as you can see they fit perfectly in there and tomorrow I'll be teaching you how to do that now another great product that we carry that fits perfectly in here too is our little mini hinge tins and again I like this just slide it put your tin right in there and then keep that bow position there place it in there and you have a perfect little gift for a friend or for a party favor or anything you can think of and tomorrow I will be teaching you on how to do the different um, techniques on the lip moisturizers using my digital studio metal sheets and the little tents as you can see this project is very easy to make and it is just a very elegant piece where you can for a party favor for a gift and like I said this will be retiring along with the paper and the ribbon so if you want it you need to go ahead and get it now this gives you a small glimpse into what kind of projects we're offering in our new Add a Little Dazzle Virtual Club. We've already released our first one and the excitement is in the air. We are growing by leaps and bounds and people are loving the projects and this is just an example of what you will see and one of the things is that the projects that will be featured there are exclusive to Add a Little Dazzle Virtual Club members. So if you're not a club member, you will never see the project. You might see a sneak peek, but you won't see the project. Now, the great news is, is we know that it's after the 11th, but if you register now and you either go through our subscription program or the placing a stamping up order, you can still qualify to receive this month's tutorial and then you'll just be required on the 1st through the 11th of the following month to place an, uh, another order so you can get that month's. So great news, you don't have to wait, you can go ahead and get started now. Um, please make sure to visit our Stamping Up store to purchase your products before they retire along with Stamping Up um, trans I mean add a little dazzle transfer sheets lip moisturizers and white tins if you have any questions please feel free to email me at Monica at add a little dazzle .com. thanks and have a dazzling day